Do you know what Tyvek paper is? Did you ever think to use it on a gel plate? Welcome back, friends. So a long time ago, I saw somebody um, make stencils with Tyvek envelopes. I haven't been able to find that video again. So I've, I think it was quite a few years ago. Um, but why not? It's a strong paper. You can't tear it. Uh, you make the stencils just random. You can also plan them if you want. But also the paint sticks to the stencil that you're using. So now you have not only the wonderful papers that you've made, but you also have these fun shapes with all these colors on them. So it's, it's like uh, bonus time, you know? Anyway, let's just... Um, go make some papers. So I have here some Tyvek envelopes. Just happens to be what I already have. So I want to use them because they're just sitting in, in the cabinet doing nothing. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to um, deconstruct the envelope. And this, this is what I'm going to use to cut some random shapes. And I'm not going to like plan this out. I might even you know, fold it up a little bit and then cut some shapes and get some randomness. Very reminiscent of what we would do when we were in grade school. And so I'm just going to have some fun and cut some odd shapes. Some of them I might love and some of them I might not. Um, but I'm going to give it a go and see what I come up with. So as you can see, I'm being very random and I might not use everything that I cut, but I'm just going to cut a whole bunch. And some of them are, you know, shapes I know I like, and some are just, you know, I don't know what I was thinking, kind of, you know, but I might actually use them anyway. So these ones that I cut the diamonds out of, I actually like, I like some of them and some of them I don't. Like that might actually turn out nice on the plate. And I'm also going to do some, I like a lot of curves. Um, so I'm probably going to do more curves. But even this is just kind of um, working off of a fold, and I like the way that came out. So I'm being as random as I possibly can. You just never know what you're going to enjoy. So just go for it. Okay, so I, this was a lot of fun. As you could see, I, I made a lot of random shapes. I have some circles and some uh, half circles. Um, I have things with hard edges and also just like small curves. Um, lots and lots of different shapes. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of these, probably not. But um, maybe each one I'll use at least once so I get some, some color on it. And that way I can use these in a collage at, at a future time. But I just love some of these shapes. So I'm using my 9 by 12 plate today and I'm going to probably experiment with some of my favorite colors as you will see and um, I'll, I'll show them to you as, as we go but uh, this is an aquamarine actually that I just recently got from Nova Paints. This is a mixture of quinacridone red and some Hansa yellow and um, I'm probably going to use, oh this is a blue green with white. These are all Nova colors in these little bottles, mixtures that I mixed up. Even the ultramarine, I added some white to it. Yet this is the yellow green straight out of their bottles and a Payne's gray. Okay, so let's get started. I'm starting with a little Hansi yellow and, um, and that mixture that I have that's kind of like an orange. Um, I mixed Hansi yellow with Quinacridone red, and I got and I made a little bottle. So it's a very uneven colored background. I prefer that. I don't like, you know, solid colors. Just even, <laughs> they bore me. And on this first print, I kind of made a mistake. I took a little too long to decide where things were going. And the paint is a very fast drying paint. And so, um, you know, if you need to know your, about your paint, um, 
is is it really super fast drying or um, you know is it a slower drying paint like an Amsterdam or, or Liquitex Basics or something like that so you'll see um, around the edges I don't think it comes up too nicely so I'm, 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 I'm peeking on the corner and I'm not seeing what what I should be seeing and uh, so it didn't come up very well around the edges. But now I have this nice outline of the stencils and the stencils all have beautiful color on them. So I kind of like that subtle outline that it left behind. So I'm going to just pick this up with, you know, like a very light color. And so I'm just going to use some white. And this will also clean off the plate so that I can do another. So I'm going to pick up in about two minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, so let's pick this up. You see we got nice, you know, all the paint came off the edges. And we got a really nice subtle print. So I, this I absolutely love. I could use this as a background starting point. Okay, so on that first print, I have a lot of white, which is actually the paper, and that's not good. So I'm going to try to um, add another layer to that. I should have made a background first and then I could have made this print, but I wasn't thinking. So we're going to do like a more contrasting color. Um, we're going to choose the um, yellow green and this is the blue green with a little bit of white. Kind of looks like a teal. Blend a little bit in the middle. And I, I want to get just a different set of uh, stencils now, so we have a different look on this one. And I'm still staying with the Nova paint, even though it's drying like too fast, and I'm trying to be a little faster this time. But it's frustrating because with something like this, I want to take my time to decide where these stencils should go. And here I am like moving super fast. So at this time I'm thinking maybe I should choose a paint that I know dries a little bit longer, even though it might be still fluid like a golden, so that um, you know I can get through this session without having with, with clean uh, pickups because I'm not happy that I'm that I miss the edges. And as you can see, it's happening again. So yeah, I'm really giving it some thought, but I still have a lot of white on that print, so I'm going to do it differently going forward. But I'm, I'm going to do the same thing and pick up this fabulous little ghost print that we have here with just outlines. So I'm going to pick that up with some nice white paint again and get a nice, you know, starting point for a collage. These are always the kind of papers that I love to have in my stash in case I need them. And again, I'm going to have to wait about two minutes, so I'll be back. So while waiting for this to dry, I pulled out some Amsterdam paints. They are slower drying paint, and um, I still am sticking with that same kind of color family. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, we got a nice ghost print here. So I'm starting with this like greenish yellow. I don't remember exactly what Amsterdam calls it. I think that was an Amsterdam color. So I'm starting with a background this time. I don't want to see any white paper. Not good for collage. See, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm probably going to spray the background to fill in those white areas. Because when I go to collage this, it's, gonna, it's not going to work out so good. So I do like the print, though. 
So again, I waited about two minutes. And we've got a nice green. It's not completely solid, so it's, I kind of like that. Okay, so now we're gonna overlay some other colors and we're gonna use our stencils. So I found my, my white. I have only this tiny little bottle from Amsterdam. I don't remember what my thoughts were on this, but I had used white uh, in a, a uh, composition for, for something else that I was doing, I think on Patreon. And I was really pleased with the way it came out. So I thought I would give it a try on this one to create some negative space, but to do it with paint rather than having the raw paper showing. I'm just kind of overlaying. And I'm gonna go over the green. So I'm still using the Art Advantage paper. I know that quite a few of you have mentioned that um, you haven't been able to find it. The link that I've been sharing is uh, saying that it's out of stock. So I will be sharing a video probably next week where I compare other rice papers to the Art Advantage and then we can pick a replacement. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's a start. And now we have this fabulous ghost print that I'm just gonna to try to pick up with some deli paper, of course. So I think this is gonna be a nice transparent piece of paper. I, I like the grunginess of it. I like the odd shapes. I think it'll be nice in a collage. And I don't have too many with white paint, so this is good. didn't all come up but that's okay now we have a nice uh, for some reason with these Tyvek papers it always leaves a little outline I don't usually have that with my regular stencils so this is kind of interesting so I'm gonna do um, another layer here I just added a little bit of white is it that dark this blue's just a little too dark for me but I don't think that paint mixed very well. But I think those white fine lines from around the, the stencils will actually make, um, you know, a nice print. So we're going over that same print again. Yeah, and I'm waiting about, you know, I just waited about a minute, minute and a half. And we're still, we're still not getting the edges. I don't know what that's about, but I'm still not getting the edges. But I love those white lines as they go through the blue. And we're just gonna try to pick up this ghost. So as you can see, our Tyvek papers are now getting overlaid with paint in a different way. And that can make some, for some like really interesting collage papers. So you gotta keep these temporary stencils to use in your collage later. So, you know, I love that color combination. We'll see if we can add another layer or something, but I was just kind of testing to see if I liked um, that orangey paper, orange yellow paper um, with that blue. 
So look at these pieces of paper. I mean, look at how fabulous. Can you imagine these in a collage? I mean, they are wonderful color combinations. Problem is I'm gonna to continue to use them and I'm gonna destroy them. But what I really should have done is taken these two that I have on top of this plate right now. I should have pulled them aside because they look fabulous. Okay, so let's take a look at this ghost print. Look at all those beautiful white lines that are going through. How fabulous is that? The green, the blue went a little green because of the hands of yellow, but it looks fabulous. So now we're gonna go with alizarin crimson mixed with a little bit of Hansi yellow. No, that's not Hansi yellow. That's uh, an Amsterdam yellow, so I'm not really sure what it is. Again, I did sloppy mixing <laughs> on purpose. I'm just being very random even as I'm laying down my stencils. You still want to work fast because it's acrylic paint, it's going to dry. And I love the curved shapes along with the ones that have, you know, little points to it. Okay, we're adding another layer. I think this is the, we have the background, two layers. This is like the third layer over the background, so a total of four layers. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, that's fun. And at least now I know that that white is paint, not raw paper. So I could use it in a collage without worry. I'm not so crazy about the alizarin crimson. I tried to get my paint out of the magenta tube and I couldn't, it wasn't coming out. So um, you'll see, I, I, I figured that out later. Anyway, we're getting more fun shapes on our stencils. Love it. Okay, so now I'm, I'm carefully planning like what color I should pick this up with because I wanna make sure that I get all this, you know, wonderful goodness that I have in here. This turned out a little bit better than I expected. I didn't like that color on the, as the final layer of that previous print, but actually I think um, this is very, this is gonna be very nice. So I'm picking up with a Hansi Yellow. On the pickups, I am using Nova Color because um, I don't have to worry. I'm, I'm picking up immediately while the paint is still wet. It was just when I was using, laying down the stencils, I was taking too long and then um, not doing such a great job of picking up. Okay, so let's let's see what this looks like. It's not bad but it needs another layer. It has a lot of grunge in there and we have nice shades, various shades of colors in there. So I was thinking of using the um, pyrrole, uh, pyrrole <laughs> orange, I can never remember how to pronounce it as many times as I'm told. Um, but anyway, I wanted something with more contrast. So I'm going with uh, Golden's Fluid Teal it's a very opaque color. So I've been calling these stencils, but they're really masks, technically. And so if you're, you know, this is a great lesson in positive and negative shapes. So it's, I, I didn't register very well. That's what I'm pointing out there. The paper's almost the size of my plate, but not quite. So I can still have, I have a little bit of a margin of error there. And, but these are gonna be collage papers, so I'm not looking to be perfect with my registration. If you're not sure what registration is and how it applies here, I am planning a video that's gonna go into different ways that you can register your paper to the plate 
so that it lines up that's what that means the registration is lining up in the same place every time but sometimes I will say sometimes they're happy accidents anyway I really like this this is um, this is a fun print we did get some grunge where the teal is so we're seeing the the colors below and now we have a ghost print and so I'm gonna pick up my ghost with Titan green pale it's a nice neutral color it's kind of a very light celadon color um, very neutral and it, it goes well with this teal color which is what the ghost is the ghost is mostly teal so maybe it'll give me sort of a bluish neutral I don't know blue green neutral so I mentioned this in almost every video I am NOT pressing down this is rice paper it's just sucking up the paint I, all I'm doing is feeling for like the coolness does the paint feel like it's dry and as soon as it does feel dry that's when I pull and this actually came out darker than I thought it would but it still can be considered a neutral I guess so I like the way this one came out but I think it needs one more layer and I want to put uh, add a little bit of lightness to it so this is Titan buff a little bit of the green is coming from well the green is coming from the blue actually it was still on my brayer and so we're just going to do another layer here I've lost track of how many layers I have on this print but you know you just have to go with the flow I am in flow <laughs> almost every session I get into flow I don't know if you experience that but you know flow state is a wonderful thing and we it's almost like a, like a high I guess um, you and that's why this is so addictive because this process really gets you into that flow so as lovely as this is believe it or not I am thinking of putting another color another layer this is what happens when you're just not sure but uh, in the flow and you just keep going and you don't want to waste any time this one is the magenta I it was just my cap that was stuck I had paint in there so um, luckily and I'm adding just a little bit of Hansa yellow to mix in with that I love how it warms it up a little bit and I'm just going fast to get these these down don't want the paint to dry so it's not going to put a lot these are big stencils big masks and um, it's not going to put a lot of that color on here but I think it's going to be spectacular I keep checking with my what my papers look like because if there's one that's spectacular I don't want to destroy it unfortunately there were a couple that I already did kind of muddy up but yeah that's a lot of fun and I like how we see the white or I guess that was uh, Titan buff look at that one Wow see some of these papers are really looking good they're really looking nice for collage themselves especially that arc shaped one I love it okay so now we have this nice ghost it has a lot of paint so let's see where we can take this this one so I'm going to pick up with some Titan buff this is a Sennelier abstract acrylic paints comes in this interesting pouch I do find it to be a good paint for picking up on the final layer but um, we're gonna just spread this all over and pick this up and then use it as like a background probably for more layers and so again I'm gonna come back in two minutes after this is uh, finished drying and well here we go we got like a clean pickup all the edges everything 
We have a lot going on in this print. I love those fine light lines as well as the big bold background. So now we're going to switch to a dark color. And we're going to use a nice Payne's Gray. And I'm actually going to overlay one more time <coughs> on one of the prints I've already done. I keep thinking it's perfect the way it is, and then I get an idea to do something else with it. So I'm, I'm preserving that, that arc at the top. I'm making sure that I don't do anything with that side of it because I just love it the way it is and I want to use it in collage. So I, I realized after I laid down that big one on the far left that that was a mistake. I really, you know, if you're going to use a dark color, you've got to go all the way to the edge. So I kind of screwed up on that one, but, you know, we're not always thinking when we're in the flow. <laughs> and I don't know why, I must have like six, seven layers on this one by now. And this one, I'm trying to think of what I want to do on top of this. While we're waiting for the other one to dry, I'm really, I'm really thinking about color combinations that might look good with this. Um, it's a mystery at this time anyway we're going to pull this I think it, it keeps getting better Yeah, it just keeps getting better I just wish that darkness was over on the side probably in another session I will you know put something over there um, but like I said this is for collage so like who cares if, if the composition isn't 100% so now we have some uh, Payne's Gray Ghost with the outlines. So I'm going to pick that up with the magenta. Payne's Gray and magenta look beautiful together. And, th and this magenta is very similar to the quinacridone red and golden and other, um, you know, other companies. So I, it's one of my favorite reds. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> so we are going to get, um, you know, the negative space and all of that. We're going to be picking up all those like fine lines in the, in the Payne's gray. And that's what makes your prints more interesting. I think in my opinion, so this print turns out to be my favorite of the group that I did this day. It was um, not just because of the colors, but, and it's, it's more like tone on tone. It's like different shades of the magenta, along with the fine details of the Payne's Gray. And I just love the composition. Now we did get a grungy out, outcome here. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner, it's very grungy, but um, I still love it. Absolutely love this one. Okay, so now underneath these papers, we have this. Don't wanna waste this. It's very transparent. So I'm thinking about color, carefully thinking, look at this paper, that paper I absolutely love. So I start actually like carefully uh, removing the papers that I don't want to print over because I'm just loving them for collage pieces. And uh, I want to make sure I don't destroy them. I had already destroyed a couple, so I was, I was being a little more cautious. Okay, so this is Indian yellow, also very transparent, and it's going to change that magenta color. It's going to warm it up a bit. And we're just going to pick this up as is. 
not going to warm it up a bit. It's going to warm it up a lot. <laughs> and so I also pulled out Jenkins Green, but I don't think I ended up using it. I have just a tiny little bottle of the Jenkins Green and the Indian Yellow, because recently I have purchased the Indian Yellow from Nova Color, and so... I mean, I'm, the color is very similar, so I, I no longer need uh, to purchase a big bottle from Golden. I, I'm trying to be a little more economic, stretch my money a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to use that chevron looking paper, but I'm making sure I don't um, destroy that side of it. Because <laughs> that side's beautiful. I love it. Same thing with that arc. Those two I love, and I don't want to destroy them. I love those little, just those little accidental little shapes. If I think, yeah, that's when I decided I'm, I'm putting them aside. I'm, I don't, I'm afraid of ruining them. Now, I didn't get a clean pull on this, as you can see. We've got a lot of grunge, but I love it. I mean, for collage, this is going to be fantastic. So all that paint that was left on the plate, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to pick that up with yet, but I'm definitely going to do something with it. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up with Titan Buff again. And as you can see, this paint, the Sennelier Abstract Paint, is, is a stickier paint. It's, it's uh, I don't know if, it, I wouldn't call it a heavy body. But it's not like a soft body. It's a little, little thicker than the Amsterdam. Amsterdam's creamier. Um, it's a little more sticky, but it's a great pickup color. It's a great pickup color and paint. So let's let this dry, and then we'll pick it up. So a lot of times when I really want to clean the plate of all the grunge, I leave it a little bit longer. I still didn't get all of it in the lower right-hand corner. I left some paint, some paint on the plate. Same thing above, above middle. But sometimes, you know, that adds to the next layer, so I'm just going to leave it. And this is azo, um, quinacridone nickel azo gold. I still have some, believe it or not. And so we're going to see what we can do with that one. And I'm using some stencils I haven't used yet. That really big one. Okay, that should do it. And we're going to go over that, that one again. I just want to see if I could add... A nice subtle transition um, very transparent paint so it's similar in color it's going to maybe just add a little more dimension you can see by the tick marks on the bottle it's very transparent this is the paint that went away about a year ago so you cannot buy it anymore I still have what's left in this bottle plus a whole other bottle and uh, it was a favorite at the time and I didn't I wanted to make sure that I was gonna have it for a while so and then I wasn't a favorite so much anymore I go through these periods where colors really speak to me and then they no longer speak to me yeah so this really added a little bit more of a dimension in the background because we had a lot of yellow going on in the back love it this is my second favorite I think Okay, so now we have this great ghost, but it's very, very transparent. It's very light. I have to think carefully about what I'm going to use to pick it up. I think this is green gold. Yes, it's absolutely green gold. Beautiful, Another beautiful color, very transparent. And, okay, we're going to lay down our stencils again. So 
so I think I'm going to pick this up with deli paper because we haven't really worked with deli paper at all this session and I kept looking at that background and I thought wow this I would be nice to have on deli paper a nice transparent because we, we picked up all those fine lines so I'm very happy with that but we still have a ghost So I'm always looking underneath just to see, you know, what do I want to pick this up with? So I'm, I'm just picking this up with um, titanium white and I didn't let it dry very long. So as you could see some of the green gold and the yellow, they kind of mixed a little bit, but that's fine. And I'm picking up with rice paper. And look at how beautiful that one came out. I'm, I'm putting that one aside for sure. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm still, I'm looking at my papers and thinking, hmm, do I love that enough that I better put it aside? Because I'm, I'm still, you know, this is a collage paper making session. So even the masks that I cut out, I, I need to see if I like them. That one turned out really beautiful. So I'm definitely gonna make sure I don't print over that. So the red side is okay. That side, I suppose I could use as a focal point. So I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. You know, I could probably use it somewhere in collage. That one I kind of like. I like the subtle colors that are going on with the dark Payne's gray. That I love. The colorful side anyway. I also like that and the way the diagonals go with the uh, tick marks. Absolutely love that one. I'm glad I saved it in time. <laughs> and this one. I love the color combinations and I love the, just the, I, the diagonal with the horizontal. It looks, it looks fabulous. And that tiny bit of teal. Okay, let's pull this and see what we got. It looks pretty good. I think it will also make a nice background. I even got beautiful grunge along the edge. Picked up a lot. Okay, to recap, I think I got some interesting papers on this one. So some of these that are, I'm saying are like, these were cleanup sheets, let's face it. Um, but they will make great collage paper. Um, this, this transparent one is going to be fun to use just pieces of it and to bring in odd shapes. This cleanup sheet is also a great background, like put it in a journal and use it as a starter. Um, this one I'm going to have to spray some paint from on the un underside of it to bleed through because the white is really not going to work with collage because the rice paper becomes transparent, but not transparent enough, in my opinion. Anyway, this one too I like, even though it's, it's just very green. Um, we got some really light ghosts that I think look fabulous. And this white one on transparency deli paper, fantastic. Now this one I just kept going. I, I lost track of how many layers I had on here. And, uh, this will make a great collage paper pieces of it, including that far right side that I thought was um, a mistake in my, you know, I just wish I had put some black uh, paint gray over there. This one I love, even though we lost some of the color and it's grungy, there are pieces of this that I love. And this was just a, uh, like lifting a ghost basically, fantastic. 
Same thing with this one. I also was putting a lot of layers. I think there's a total of four or five layers here. And, but each layer added a little bit more drama. And this one was far simpler. I can't remember how many layers it was, maybe two or three, but absolutely my favorite of the day. And I love those, those pinker tones and that richness of the magenta on top, just really, you know, very transparent. We got bits of the paint's gray, fine lines, good detail, fantastic. So that is it for today. I really enjoyed this session. I hope you did too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to create, inspire, and share, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.